Good morning, my honorable friends. I'll begin this in a really simple way. Who's had breakfast today? You can just show your hands. Yeah, I certainly did. Um, what did you have? For example, gentlemen in the first row. What did you have for breakfast today? First fruit and smoothie. Nice. Anybody else who had fruit and smoothie for breakfast? Uh, I just had cheese and coffee. <laughs> but thank you. This makes it actually very easy to talk in front of you, because I have a feeling that you are humans just like me. I am Evelyn Grauen, and I'm an anthropologist, and I said an advocate for using food as a powerful tool for communication and connection. Today, I will talk about quite a new branch of cultural diplomacy, which is culinary diplomacy, and ask how can we increase the impact of culinary diplomacy by getting help from other fields that work with food. I agree with what Mark said on Tuesday, that now more than any time before it is crucial to build bridges on a person-to-person -person level. And I think that food is really the tool for doing that. Culinary diplomacy is based on the idea that the shortest way to the hearts and minds of people is through the stomach. And though food has been used for a long time for connecting people, it is only since the early 2000s that there has been focus on this um, in academic research. So here's a little uh, timeline. In the beginning, uh, culinary diplomacy emerged in relation to state-level nation branding initiatives. And more recently, there's been more focus on citizen culinary diplomacy, which refers to grassroots initiatives all over the world that are using food to bridge cultural differences. And as said by the scholar who's written most extensively on culinary diplomacy, Sam Chopel Soko, it is precisely at the citizen level that food has most power to be used um, for conflict resolution. Now, diplomacy is not the only field where there, there has been increasing interest in uh, food in these uh, recent years. And uh, actually, this is where things get really interesting. Uh, look at the shape of this timeline. It starts in 1983 and maps out the beginnings of food-focused research in different research areas. And in different ways, all of these research areas Tell us something about the complex ways in which we interact with food and the complex ways in which we are influenced by food. So in social sciences, we might learn about how the food that we eat has to do with who we are, our personal identity, who we see ourselves as belonging with, but also who we see as others. So there is potential there to both connect, but also to divide people. In uh, food design, we might learn about how to organize events around food that really make an impact on people, that really create memories, that are really a learning experience. Or neurogastronomy might let us know that actually the 
The experience of tasting food is the human behavior that activates most parts of our brain. That's because it is not only the, the sensory taste of the food that we experience, but also emotions and memories that have to do with that. So really what we can see is uh, here is an emerging future in what we can know about how to use food. And I would say that this is now an ideal moment to gather knowledge from these different fields and use them to educate and empower people and organizations working with culinary diplomacy so that they could really impact. Now, I've been fascinated by these developments. And for that reason, about half a year ago, I started creating a network to see how we could grasp the collective intelligence of these different fields. It's called Food for Understanding and started on Facebook. Why use social media? Because it allows to create conversations that are really equal, immediate, and impactful. Now here's the important thing. The greatest enthusiasm that I've encountered as response to my call for people who also want to use food to further understanding or communication or connection the greatest enthusiasm has been from practitioners of citizen culinary diplomacy from different parts of the world. And why is that? I think it's because they really directly experience the impact that their work can have on individuals and also on communities. And they experience the urgency that is uh, in this work to respond to our challenges. And the wish to connect, share experience, and gain new tools. This leads me to a little case study. This September, I was invited to be part of the first international youth exchange uh, dedicated to culinary diplomacy. This took place in Slovakia. And there were 50 young people from 10 different countries participating. During the day, they learned about culinary diplomacy and had discussions about social and cultural issues. In the evening, they were organizing cultural dinners to each other and also for the local community as there was a food festival happening. Now this combination is really interesting because although the main aim of the program was for the participants to get to know each other and connect with each other, they were also learning the basics of culinary diplomacy. They started to practice it and imagine its possibilities. The impact that this week had on the participants really surprised me. And let me quote two of the participants that I really remember well. Uh, one of them, a Lithuanian participant who had been part of a number of youth exchanges before, said that the friendships that were made over food were simply deeper and truer. Another participant from Iran, for him it was the first time to be in Europe. And on the last day, he said, I had so many cultural shocks. Now I feel love from all of you. For me, this really illustrates how well that program worked. And of course, being a pilot project a lot of things went well, but a lot of other things could have gone better. 
but how to go about starting a successful project of culinary diplomacy. And how could we help youth to do the same? For example, after that program, they go back to their countries and they want to make a difference, bridge a, a gap in understanding in their community. Up to now, there has been no framework, no playbook or toolbox that would help to start a project of citizen culinary diplomacy. The discipline, of course, is young. But as I mentioned, there are many people around the world who are experimenting with this. And at the same time, there's new impactful knowledge in other fields that could be used. So building on this, I think a next step for a culinary diplomacy that really acts would be to work on how can we design um, really impactful citizen culinary diplomacy projects. And um, I've tried to make the first step towards that. What you can see on the screen is a first version of a citizen culinary diplomacy project <coughs> canvas that I started developing during that youth exchange. Its aim is to be a clear and easily usable framework for either starting or improving citizen culinary diplomacy projects. Now, of course, this is only the first version and a start of a conversation. So I'm really looking forward to collaboration with practitioners and experts who would like to work with us. And in addition to anyone who would like to collaborate, I'd also like to make this call to the ICD. So I'd love to see some more stepping up on the topic of culinary diplomacy that's on the rise. And what if we organize a symposium that is dedicated to culinary diplomacy? Bring in experts from different fields, practitioners from around the world, and together find the tools that help us to empower projects that really have an impact. Culinary diplomacy, it's difficult to only theorize about it, you also need to practice it. So as a thank you to all of you, uh, once we go to coffee break, there will be some cookies there that I made for you, according to my grandmother's recipe. So in addition to these uh, fruits and smoothies, uh, you can also taste something from my home country. Thank you.